This morning's psalm is Psalm number 17, as we continue to read our way through the book of Psalms. Another psalm written by David. In this case, the ESV says it's a prayer that David is lifting up his heartfelt cry to God. Certainly, we've sensed that, though, in every psalm that we've read from David. David is sharing his thoughts, his emotions. He's writing for the benefit of the people, but he's writing also, more importantly, for the benefit of his own soul. And this morning, we'll see that, sense that again as we work through it. So find your way there if you haven't already done so. Psalm number 17. Let's go ahead and begin reading. David says, Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you'll find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. With regard to the words of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps. They set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from my men or from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. You fill their womb with treasure. They are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. And so here yet again is another prayer of David, another psalm written by King David. Again, we're not told the specifics of the occasion behind this writing. Scholars guesstimate, if you will, trying to figure out what this particular psalm might be addressing. But typically, they're not very specific, and that's certainly the case here. And thus, his words of encouragement, the words that kind of describe his challenge, are generic enough that we can all can relate. For many of us, Months ago would have been the virus. Now today, many of us are not as worried about the virus, but we're worried about the economy and the fallout from the shutdown for the last 10 weeks or nine weeks. For some of us, it's fears about other health-related issues or family problems or job concerns. And whatever your situation is, David has a word of hope here in Psalm 17 for us. So let's again work our way through it. It's a little longer than some we've looked at so far. We have to move a little more quickly. But let's see what David has to say and see if God doesn't have something to say to us through it. So David begins his prayer, crying out to God, Hear a just cause. Attend to my cry, he adds. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. David says there's many things that he's messed up in life, right? We know the story of David of Bathsheba taking the census when he should not have in other things. But David was a man after God's own heart. David desired to speak truthfully, and in the case of Psalm 17, while you may be able to go, surely David lied sometime, certainly in the case of Psalm 17, David's not lying. He's not hedging his bet. He's not kind of shading the truth a little bit here. He's being forthright and honest in his concerns and his desires before God. May that be true of all of our prayers as well. God already knows what you need. Tell him. Be honest with him. Admit your heartfelt concerns. And see if God doesn't use your prayer not to change him, but to change you by bringing you hope or peace through it. And so here's David's hope, his prayer. From your presence, let my vindication come. Let God be the answer to his vindication, his protection, the response to those who challenge or confront David. Let your eyes behold the right. Let God see what's right and do it. He says in verse 3, God, you've tried my heart. You've searched my heart. You've visited me by night. You've tested me, and you'll find nothing. Again, David's not saying he's sinless. What David is saying is he's done nothing to provoke the particular incident that's occurring right now. 
Same thing with all of us. We didn't ask for the virus. We didn't seek it. None of us were out, you know, living flippantly, flaunting our health, and now all of a sudden we're being punished for it. There's oftentimes you don't know why things are happening. You think of poor Job in the book of Job. Job was a good and blameless man, upright, never, you know, he always fled from sin, and yet he suffered magnificently, mightily in the book. God knows. He says, end of verse 3, I've purposed on my mouth, will not transgress. David's making sure he's honest and truthful. Regard to the, or with regard to the works of man, by the word of your lips, I've avoided the ways of the violent. God has said, flee from violence. David has tried to flee from it. He says, my steps in verse 5 have held fast to your paths. He's done what God's commanded. He's followed God's lead. He says, I've held to your paths. My feet have not slipped. God has kept him just as God promised. He says, I call upon you, for you will answer me. We have a God who hears prayer. Incline your ear and hear my words. Wondrously, I love that phrase in verse 7, wondrously show your steadfast love. We've mentioned that the other day, how many times God's steadfast love is lifted up in the Bible, especially again in the book of Psalms. I believe I said the other day that it's 56 times that God's steadfast love is mentioned in just the book of Psalms. But David's calling God to wondrously show it, to do it in such a way that it cannot be missed. In fact, some have translated that phrase wondrously show as in to David's crying out to God, distinguish me by your steadfast love. Show your steadfast love to the world through me, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries, where? At your right hand. The same exact kind of language we just saw in Psalm 16 last time. Keep me, he says, as the apple of your eye. There's that phrase many of us have heard. That's where it comes from, from Scripture. Hide me in the shadow of your wings like a mother hen protecting her chicks. From the wicked who do me violence, my enemies who surround me. Protect me, Lord, from those who would do him harm. Verse 10, they close their hearts to pity. They have no pity, right? Very often the enemy, the violent, don't care what suffering we have. In fact, very often evil people take pleasure in other people's suffering, right? The people who abuse children or abuse their, abuse their spouses or abuse animals, they get some sort of sick pleasure or satisfaction from hurting others. David's enemies have no pity. Their mouths, they speak arrogantly. They mock. They make fun of. They tear down. They have now surrounded our steps. They've set their eyes to cast us to the ground, surrounded, seemingly hopeless. He says he's like a lion. He's eager to tear. He's like a young lion. He's waiting to ambush me, wants to bring me down. So what's David's prayer in verse 13? Arise, O Lord, come up, confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. Again, that's what's called an imprecation. It's an imprecatory prayer praying that God will respond to our cries, defeat our enemies for his own glory. From, your, my, or from men by your hand, O Lord, verse 14, from men of the world whose portion is in this life, from people who think this is it, that the whole world is it, life is it, and it is over. So, right, he who dies with the most toys wins would be a modern bumper sticker equivalent of the people he's describing here. For the men of the world whose portion is in this life, he says, you'll fill their womb with treasure. They're satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. Sometimes the world seems to be winning. Those who are ungodly, unrighteous, those who hate the truth, who hate God's people, sometimes seem to be succeeding when we're struggling. David says, yeah, those things come from God also, but that's not David's hope. That's not our hope. Our hope is what David describes in verse 15. As for me, he says, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I'll be able to stand in the presence of God with confidence in front of the Holy One, recognized, reckoned, counted as holy. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. And then again, notice something very subtle, but very profound at the end of verse 15. When I awake, now there's no end that David's been sleeping through this psalm. He's not sleeping through a prayer. When I awake is a reference to death. Right? That's where we get the idea of rest and peace, soul sleep. We've taken the proverbial dirt nap, all the different cliches we have to make death sound more satisfying. The satisfaction we have when we confront death is it's temporary. It's like a nap. When I awake, David says, when it's over, when I'm dead, but when I come through the other side, when I awake, 
when you resurrect me, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. In the end, John says, we'll see Jesus as he is because we'll be like him. When God raises us from the dead, we will finally be satisfied because for the first time since Adam and Eve ate the fruit, we'll fully be in the image of our God once more. That's our hope. Not to get through this life without harm, not to get through this life alive, but to get through death and enter into the presence of the Lord where we'll see him as he is because we'll finally be like him. May our hope be our eternal hope, not just a temporary hope from present problems.